Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time once again for another episode of Driven by Design, part two. <laughs> we are going to explore the things that drive us today here, including one kind of, uh, I'm not even sure what to call it here. I'm going to let them describe it here. Brian Thompson, what do you see? Hello, hello. Well, we are having quite a morning today, and I'm really excited to bring this uh, bike to people. I don't even want to call it a bike because it's so much more than a bike. First of all, uh, welcome to the show, Ricard Montalban. Now, when I say it, my brain wants to say Ricardo Montalban, who uh, in America, people will know that as the Chrysler guy from Fantasy Island. But you are direct from Spain, and you have an amazing, innovative uh, form of transportation that I want to give you an opportunity to tell people about. So please do, and welcome to the show, Ricard. Thank you very much. Welcome, Brian. Welcome, Paul, and all the audience. Uh, thanks for, for this time. And well, let me introduce Begoret is just a, a pedal car, a, a pedal mobile, as you want to, to tell it. And basically, it's a, a bicycle with four wheels, a full frame like a car, and independent suspension. The transmission is from your legs, and it's assisted <laughs> with, a, with an electric motor, then it's moving all this power to the to an automatic uh, gearbox in the back, and this is moving also to the differential to the rear wheel and well basically is that yeah so it's really it takes this it's kind of the concept of taking the best of a bike but adding a little more functionality that you might get in a car now are am i correct that there's also an option to have an assist with an electric motor for uh sometimes when you get a little tired of shift let's say motivating with your legs when you start to get a little bit demotivated can you shift over to electric assist Yes, and, and the assist uh, helps you up to 25 kilometers per hour. So I, I think that, well, this, this vehicle, it, it's mainly designed for, for commuting. I was driving the, the last five years uh, working in the elevator company. I was driving for one hour and a half nearly every day from going and then one hour and a half back from my uh, own town to, to Barcelona. And the last 45 minutes of this travel was to make just 10 kilometers. So uh, it makes no sense. And every day, every single day, I was thinking, if I have uh, an electric bike, I can, I can pedal just in the in the in the back of in the in the side of the of the road, and I will arrive in five minutes to to, to work. No, in 30 minutes or, or more. And that was the dream, but some days were raining, some days I saw a car crashing with another motorcycle or anything like this, and it was not enough. Also, uh, I saw a lot of news here in, in, in our country of um, traffic accidents with bicycles and cars or vans, and one van uh, crashed with uh, six uh, cyclists, and most of them were dead. And yeah. after that, I thought, well, you know, work, working out, it, it's hard, uh, especially the, f the first 20 days that you have no, uh, that you have to start doing something. Um, so what I understand here is that, you know, you're taking the bicycle experience and adding safety to the bike versus looking at this as a, as a minimal car and taking safety away. So you're in that sort of nether region, which is really nice. But what I think is so beautiful that we sort of gloss over there is that you're on your way to work or Home Depot in this country or going to school and you got people sitting there in traffic and you're all like, bye, sit there. You sit there on your iPod, I'm going in the bicycle lane. That's yeah. the key here is that you can use the bicycle lane of this and you have a bit of a, you have a bit more safety around you because of this cage yeah. than you would on an exposed bike. That's a really nice concept, Ricard. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I think that would be a really cool thing for people to, to get to experience. I, I like to see more people happier and that's a way to arrive to the office, uh, with more people smiling. And <laughs> not only when I arrived to the, to the office, um, most of the people were asleep because they have, uh, uh wake up, uh, maybe 30 minutes before and they go into the office. And I've been uh, getting up for two hours or more. So I uh, arrived there with full of energy and all the people was uh, calmed down. And I think that it's, it's nice to activate your body and your, 
and your and your brain in the in the morning, uh, just making some exercise with some assistance. You don't sweat, and then you have all the time to to make your working out with the same. Yeah, and, you know, you you bring up a really nice point here too, because you know, in, in the world I work in of automotive design, so much of it is going to autonomous uh, driving. Even you know. Yeah. Uh, one of my previous clients, their, their, their slogan is the future is for riders, not drivers. Well, that's true. But like any trend, when it's, when everybody gets on board with one thing and has a polar, uh, a polar opposite that starts to happen where people want to be drivers, <laughs> they don't want to just yeah. ride around because when you're just riding you, you're, what are you doing? You know, you're either consuming or doing work or you're, but you're doing something very static, which is probably what you're going to be doing at work anyway. So I love this idea that while that's happening on one end, you're at the opposite end of the spectrum where you're helping people stay active, being healthy, move their bodies, get excited, but also protecting them from being on a bike. I know that uh, certainly I wouldn't drive a bike in Los Angeles, but I might drive a bike in like Provincetown, a small town in Massachusetts, because I feel safe there. But I can tell you this much, I would definitely ride around in this in, in LA because I know I can be over here on the side, but I'm also more visible. It also just looks like a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I, I want to give you a chance to tell people how to find this because you're in that critical stage of development where you're looking for investors. Uh, you're hoping to bring this up. This is your passion project. Clearly, you have a lot of love for it. How do people reach out to you if they want to participate or know more or watch your progress? They can they can follow me on on the on the social media on the website called bigoret.com or also in LinkedIn, uh, Instagram or Facebook. Uh, these are the main uh, channels to contact me, and it's I think it to be uh, very useful in in all the ways. So it can just transport us for commuting for making some sport at the weekend and, 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 and move some deliveries. Normally yeah. every 10 years you change your car, but here the idea is that the, the frame, the, the aeronautical aluminum frame will be forever. So mm -hmm. you just need to change your motor, your batteries, your wheels, or, or, or also the body, but the new bodies, the new bodies must sweep on the same frame. Yeah, and what I think is really beautiful about that concept, what you just described there, of you're really buying something that you're going to have for a very long time. It's not a consumable. It's not like you're buying the cheapest car available and then you're going to throw it away, or a refrigerator, or you know, a toaster. There's a there's an element of design and charity in this, meaning cherishing this. That, that I think I compare what you've created more to uh, a piece of fine furniture, like something Charles and Ray Eames would have made than what's currently happening in the sort of disposable economy of uh, built-in obsolescence. And I, you know, it, it's funny because I, I have a desk. My desk that I work on is a Herman Miller desk. And this year, after a decade, it started delaminating. And I wrote a letter to Herman Miller and I just like said, you know, look guys, I love this desk, it's delaminating. Is there anything I can do about it? Would you believe they wrote back and said, we're gonna send you a brand new desk. And I feel, and that sort of like, commitment to creating something that you're going to be proud of to own for the rest of your life or give to your kids or use and use and multiply uh, and change. I feel like that's where this product is living more than like something you throw out. Um, would you agree? Yes, yeah. totally agree. You, you know that people that like scar that like scars like, uh, like us, uh, when you have your first car, mm, you, you can sell it. So I, I still own my first car and I, I will own it forever because yes. when, you, when you spend time with, with humans, but also with things that you feel well with it, you don't want to lose them. So oh, I love that. I designed I really it in, in a point of view that you can have a long relationship with your vehicle and that's the main idea. Oh yeah. You're, I mean, you're talking to a guy that still has the car that my parents bought in 1983. I restored it and it's the car, I own, I own the car I grew up in, you know, the actual car. So I completely get that, that there are these special things in our life that um, speak to the soul and become something very, uh, more than just an object. It's something that you, 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 and, uh, you use, but you give down generation after generation. So listen, I, uh, I love the concept. I really encourage people to check out um, burgeret.com. I'll have the link up here. And um, I just want to thank you for coming on the show 
Picard. It's it's a really cool object, a really cool purposeful piece of art is what I would call it. And um, we're definitely going to do a check-in with you in the future to see where it's going. Uh, but um, really, thank you for taking the time. And I, I wish you all the best with this because it's, I, I can tell you right now, I want one. So it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Brian, for your time. Uh, also, all, and all the audience, it, it, it has been a pleasure to be here and to hear from you. And well, see you soon. <laughs> See you soon. That's our motto here at Driven by Design. Because we're never far away. We're always driving something your way. Right here in the only show that shows you the future of design. One car conversation at a time. Right here in Orange County's only unique online radio station. OCTalkRadio.net. Streaming live from the University of California Irvine's Beale Applied Innovation Center.